It's now my great pleasure to reintroduce to you Waiwai Nu, who's an inspiring fighter for democracy. She's a member of Myanmar's Rohingya minority, and she was made a political prisoner at the age of 18, sentenced to 17 years in prison at the age of 18, if you can imagine that. She was released in 2012 after serving seven years, and she's gone on to complete a law degree in California and to continue her fight for democracy in Myanmar, which is particularly under challenge in 2021. Uh, so I'd now like to welcome her, if we can get her up on the screen. Hi, Wai Wai. Hello. <laughs> I hope you heard that, that introduction I gave you. Um, we've obviously all followed this devastating turn of events uh, in your home country in 2021. At least 700 killed, I'm sure many more when we can get to the bottom of it. 3,000 political prisoners. That's obviously the price of the, the military trying to enforce its illegitimate rule. But it's very hard, I think, for some of us to know exactly what's going on day to day because of the communication blackouts, because of the attacks on journalists. So I was wondering if you could give us your reading of the situation. What, what is the latest that you are hearing? How is this heroic resistance holding up? We've all seen some of the images of your compatriots fighting against the military. Um, and, and what is your take on it? Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored um, to speak to you today and to be to be joining this um, important summit. Uh, first of all, you know the, the the people of my country, Myanmar, have fought for democracy for decades, uh, from our independence from the British in 1948 and our mass uprising against the military dictatorship in 1990s and to today. And I have seen my, my father himself has fought for democracy his entire life. Now again, since the February um, military coup on the February 1st, um, people, our people have engaged in, as you said, non-violent um, civil dis disobedience movement on the street um, you know, to the protests um, against the military coup um, for, for a true democracy that they have never seen. Um, aside from like three fingers salute uh, from hunger, hunger Games, we have also adopted many creative ways to fight uh, against the military, um, you know, ob such as organizing now, you know, more, um, another way, a guerrilla style protest uh, during the daytime and at nighttime, banging pot and pen. And um, and even like a feminist movement called Tameng or Sarong revolutions, using the feminine femininity against the masculine, a very masculine uh, military. However, um, as you said, um, now it's actually a hundred day. Tomorrow is going to be a hundred day since coup. The military has killed over seven hundred uh, people um, and arbitrarily detained and arrested. Um, more than 3,000 people within 100 days. Um, as I speak now, the junta is unlawfully arresting people at night and killing people at daytime. And they have even killed uh, children as young as uh, six and tortured women in detains. Um, and, and just this week, uh, a poet um, called Kathy was arrested and his body was uh, uh, returned uh, to his family the next day, it was yesterday. And this is like daily experiences of Myanmar, uh, people in Myanmar today. Um, and this is just an example of how people have been experiencing coup. Uh, as I speak, the protests are ongoing and the civil disobedience movement, the government staff, public servants stop going to the uh, office um, is ongoing, and there are many other forms of protests and, and protest against the military mm -hmm. is ongoing. At the same time, as I said, military is hunting after these young people, killing young people and arresting them. Mm -hmm. And many of them who have been detained already have even no information about their whereabouts. Mm -hmm. So this is very extremely concerning. Uh, and and I would say this is the darkest moment of our time in Myanmar. If I could maybe ask you to uh, tell us a bit more, give us a flavor of the many flavors of democratic activists uh, in Myanmar. I think a lot of outsiders have reduced 
your movement to the National League for Democracy, or they know the name Aung San Suu Kyi, and they don't know how decentralized and how rich the tapestry is of people who are fighting for democracy. C can you explain a little to the audience about that? Um, of course. So recently, National League for Democracy have formed a, na a national unity government alongside with their winning uh, uh, parliamentarian uh, in, in the past elections in 2020, November. Uh, November. So aside from that, actually, there's this, the, the protest and the democracy movement itself has been very, very decentralized. It started from... Um, from the from the doctors and and nurses and and public servants, school teachers, from the day one of the military coup, um, so they started this civil disobedience movement, and then the uh, street protest has started by uh, young people, by young women, by young uh, by workers and by by laborers. Um, so so these protests has started from from the very grassroots level. It wasn't um, actually organized by uh, National League for Democracy. So, and and since then, the the entire younger generation has come out to protest against the military coup and say no more dictatorship, no more um, military um, dictatorship, and 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 urging for a true democracy, a, an inclusive federal democracy that. They wanted that the country is needed so badly. Our country has never seen a true freedom and democracy since we've got independence in 1948. And uh, and now people really need, as the world is moving ahead, we are far left behind. And young people, our young generations, started to realize we deserve freedom, we deserve democracy so that we can move on. We can catch the world, um, the, the developing world. Uh, and that's the desire is the military coup ha is somehow a slap to their, their future, their dreams, and and basically destroying their, uh, their dreams for many young people. And I think the mo that's that's the main reason why the, the democracy movement is so strong until now, after seeing so much of this brutal attacks mm -hmm. and killings public against the people. If I could ask you now about the role of foreign governments and the support your movement needs from those governments, uh, what is it that needs to be the highest priority? Is it uh, a coordinated arms embargo? Is it coordinated sanctions against the many business interests of the military? Uh, because that is essentially how they're funding themselves? Or is it something else that the protesters need to receive directly? What is it you want foreign governments to, to do next? Definitely, uh, we need support from everybody, from the governments, from the public at this time, more than ever. Know that this is our last chance for the fight for the democracy. And, um, and in the past, actually, the world has believed in flawed, um, flawed democracy as true democracy and fail to hold the military leaders accountable for their brutal crimes, especially the governments, including the U.S. government and, and Western um, governments. Um, and I now urge um, to support our calls, uh, all the governments um, uh, that include uh, the, the, the referral of the situations of Myanmar to the International Criminal Court at the, uh, through the UN Security Council, and also, um, um, as you rightly pointed out, establishing a global arms embargo and imposing sanctions on the military and its businesses. These are three calls that we've been calling for. Um, even before the military coup, we haven't addressed the, the international crimes that has been committed uh, by the military. And and that is why, that is the very reason that white military coup could happen. And these are that's why we continue to call this three calls, and we need it more in a more comprehensive manner, a more coordinated manner. Um, it, it's not going to work if one country and two countries impose these sanctions. We need it in a more comprehensive and coordinated response from the government. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, I have a question about ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and I'm asking it because we've seen China and Russia blocking further action at the UN Security Council. We already know that democracies together support you, but ASEAN is a bit of a, a mixed body, and it will be led by the Cambodian dictatorship next year. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's just a small window of opportunity to try and squeeze something out of that regional player to support you, um, and, and what might that look like? Yeah, I mean, we need to understand that ASEAN is one of the weakest insti regional institutions on Earth. And um, given that their history of and human rights record of the ASEAN member state, I think it will be utterly wrong to expect ASEAN to bring the solutions for Myanmar. But again, you know, we need support from the ASEAN countries. We need support from the neighboring countries. And I think it is important that the world realize what ASEAN is capable of doing and what the role should be. And, um, and then, you know, move on to really support. Right now, right now, I feel like the world is waiting for ASEAN to bring the solutions from Myanmar. And it's no, never going to happen. You know, they might be able to uh, interfere in, in like humanitarian, uh, providing humanitarian support. We've been calling for this humanitarian corridor, ASEAN humanitarian corridor, and that is feasible. And they might be able to push military a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily mean military will listen to them and military will uh, uh, follow their their consensus or, or their recommendations. Um, last month, we had the first ASEAN summit uh, on Myanmar, but then uh, the, the military continued to uh, uh, kill people, attack, uh, viol violently cracking down the protesters, and continue to consolidate their power uh, instead of following any of this you know, even very weak uh, consensus or recommendation they came across. So. I think that is very that is the very reason that we really need uh, UN Security Council and and the the rest of the world the governments to take the actions that we've been calling for. Otherwise, military mm -hmm. the Burmese Myanmar military did not a uh, stage a coup to return the power. They're not going to do it. Period. Knowing that, so well, that message is, is clear. Then it's on the shoulders of democracies now to step in and take action. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all we've got time for. I'm sorry, YY, but it's been an honor to hear your perspective. So thank you very much for sharing them. And I now invite Jean back onto the stage for our next speaker. Thank you.